Hey everyone, this is the Breed of Zeno, and this is going to be my very, very belated review of Alien Covenant. The I just rewatched it for a refresher, and normally when I watch a movie, I have a clear cut opinion on it, at least after the second time, you know? I've now watched Covenant about eight, and it. I'm still really mixed on it, and I have a lot of stuff I love, a lot of stuff I hate, and I had to take notes. I have a huge, huge list right here of things that I wanted to cover in this review, and if you've been following the channel for a while, you guys know I'm a huge die-hard alien fan. All right, I love the franchise to death. Generally, I'm super optimistic about everything. I can usually find the good stuff in it. And this movie really soured me on the franchise as a whole for for a while. And it just my love for it just waned for a couple months. I just I just didn't care too much. I mean I'm still get excited about stuff like, like the original movies I like, but like excitement for the future stuff. It just kinda died off. And it's mainly because of Ridley Scott. And we'll we'll get to that. We'll get to that, but I want to talk about this movie as a whole and what I like about it, what I don't like about it. So you know, I have pros and cons, <laughs> and this—I've never felt this mixed on anything, absolutely anything. Like even um, the Last Jedi, which is apparently that's a love it or hate it movie. I—I uh, I love it. I mean, it's—it's it's not perfect. I give it like an eight point five. But it's still really, really good. And I don't understand people say that it's worse than all the prequels and things like that. But for me, Alien Covenant is just... It's so divisive, even in my own mind, you know? I don't know. I don't know. So we're just gonna, I'm just going to talk it out. And just let you guys know what I don't like, what I like, and all that stuff. And okay, so... Um, first part is my pros and first off the visuals this is Ridley Scott we're talking about so obviously it's gonna be beautifully shot and the 4k transfer on the blu-ray you know, the 4k blu-ray is just beautiful the HDR is very well implemented and great depth very good visuals in this thing uh, of course it's, it's Ridley Scott you know, um, I feel like the set designs are nicely detailed. It, it feels real. It feels like it's in universe with the alien stuff. And overall, just visually, it's very pleasing. Um, Walter, I really like Walter uh, as a character. He very likable, very well acted by Michael Fassbender. Honestly, I wish he was in it more. I wish we could get more of Walter. Which you have full spoilers here. Like it's sad that he died. I, w I really want more of Walter. I like Walter way more than David, it, it, even like in the original Prometheus. Which, just to get out of the way, I I really like the f you know the first me. <laughs> I really like Prometheus. Okay, um, it, it's it's good. I really enjoy. It. I like it more and more every time I watch it. With Covenant, I like it less and less every time I watch it. You know, but Walter, really great character, really well acted. I I, I just love how stark he is. Like, I put a note down here where he's talking to David, you know, where he's like, yeah, I don't dream at all. You know, I, I fucking love that line. I just love how in grasp with his reality da uh, Walter is, you know, where he's not a dreamer. He knows he's a fucking android, you know. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. Um, number three is the Neomorphs. I love the Neomorphs so much. Like, the their life cycle, going from the spores, you know, becoming blood bursters, you know, they can come out anywhere in your body. I like that. The way the way they move, they're creepy, they sound really creepy. I fucking love the Neomorphs, okay? Uh, they're sorely underused, and I think they should have been the main antagonist creature in this film. I don't think we should have had the Xenomorphs. I'll touch on that. But... For me, I think the Neomorphs should have been the main creature. I, I think they're fantastic. They could have held a whole movie on their own. I hope we see more of those in the future. Because it's such a unique creature. I, mean, uh, I got my little NECA figure right here. I love this little guy. I mean, look, look at this. I forget, look at this. It's, it's so creepy looking. I love it. 
So cool. Love me some Neomorphs. And, uh, let's see, the, uh, transition down to number four. Uh, I really like the first act. Like, all the way up until David arrives with the flare, which basically is kind of like the first half of the movie, I guess you could say. So, like, the first half really is just the first act, which... It's a two-hour movie, and the first act doesn't end until the first hour, and then you have two more acts within an hour. It's, like I said, I'll touch on the negatives, but for me, the first act slash first hour, fantastic. I get engrossed in it every single time I watch it. Like, from start to, to, to the flare, I fucking love it. But it, it literally, it's like whenever David shows up and he shoots that flare in the air, it completely changes the movie. It does. And I've discussed this with numerous of my alien buddies, and they all agree like that's the turning point for the movie. Everything before that is fantastic. Um, going down, I really like Orem. At first, I was like, oh, this, this character is weird. I, I don't understand him. I felt like he was fleshed out enough. And then I watched a lot of the supplemental material, and I'll touch again on you know, the missing footage and the cons, but I feel like he was probably the most well-rounded character and he could have had the best arc if they included the deleted scenes in here, you know? Especially him being the one to birth the Xenomorph. So I, I really like... really like Orem. I thought Orem was pretty good. Number six um, is the music. I adore a lot of the music in this, especially the chest pressure scene music, the... Um, the medbay scene, oh my god. You know, where the Neomorphs birthing out of the guy's back, oh my god. Just like, doof, doof, doof. I love that. And the terror morphing scene, like, I love the music in there too. Like, oh, it's so good. Some really good musical compositions in this. And they definitely stand out among the rest of the franchise. I mean, I still think that Aliens has the most iconic score because it's been used over and over and over and over and over. It's almost a cliche at this point. You know. <laughs> but <laughs> um transitioning down to number seven, which is the med bay scene. It's impartial due to the music, but that scene is so tense. From start to finish like when they're bringing um what is it, Ledward? Yeah, when they're bringing Ledward in f uh, from the wheat fields to the ship. Like, from there, it's just like, oh my god, this, like, every time I watch this movie, you like, you pick up your phone, you like, you browse Twitter or something like that, when you get bored, like, no matter what, whenever that, that starts kicking in, I put everything down and my attention's on the screen. Every single time. Right? From start to finish, the med bay scene is just so good, you know? And it ends, you know, of course, when the flare goes up, and like I said, that, it's weird that probably the movie's best scene is bookended with the transition into the worst parts of the film. But the mid bay scene just so especially by the way the Neomorph just like pounds his head through the window. I love that. I want more of that. Uh, next up is the terraforming bay scene. I really love that terraforming bay scene. You know, again partially due to the music. Um but just the way the Xenomorph moves, it's like the one good Xenomorph scene for me. The Xenomorph moves so creepy, it reminds me of Alien Isolation, like the way that he enters the terraforming bay, you know? And just the way it moves and leaps and how relentless it is, that's a Xenomorph. I really enjoy that scene a lot. Um, and my last pro is the facehugger scene, which, you know, is where um, uh, Lope is, you know, gets facehugged, right? That, to me, is something that has been sorely underused in this franchise. And it's facehookers being scary. Because usually, they just use them as a plot device so they could have Xenomorphs birthed. You know? The only other movie that has had a terrifying Xeno a t terrifying facehugger scene is Aliens. It, I, I want more facehugger scary scenes, okay? <laughs> Like, they're, they're fucking creepy the way they run on the ground. Like, oh, they're so fast. I love that. Like, I feel like you could have a whole sequence where somebody's just being chased by a facehugger and it could be tense as all hell. You know? I, I feel like they're just, they feel like they're so often overlooked because they're so small and people just, oh, we gotta, we gotta get to the xenomorph, you know? But 
I love that this this movie gave the face hooker some respect and had that little short scene of it where it's running around jumping like that. That's super fucking creepy. Okay, I love that. <laughs> um, transitioning over to the cons. Um, first off is the loose connection to Prometheus. I really wish this was more hard rooted into Prometheus. Uh, of course, you know we have. The, the death of Shaw, which is barely even touched on. It's just it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah she died. Yep. Yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> we really needed that, um... Crap, what the, I'm blanking on the scene name now. Uh, but it was the one that they released on YouTube where it had Shaw and David. Like, that was originally in the movie, guys. They they they, they claimed that was just from marketing. But that was originally in the movie. That's in the script, Okay. We needed that. We needed that connection. And that, that sucks. Uh, it, it really feels like they just wanted to cut all ties to Prometheus as possible, which I get why people don't like it, because it's not an alien movie, you know? It doesn't have alien title, there's no Xenomorphs, but like, I like it because it's different, you know? It's still in universe, it's more of an adventure movie, it's not a horror movie. But I like where it was leading to, and they just completely abandoned everything. And I hate that, you know. Um, number two, it dis disregards canon completely. Completely disregards canon. Like, th this, this is going to cut into an, a later point with David being the creator. But how in the hell are there going to be, you know, these are the Xenomorphs. Like, how in the hell are they going to be here when, like... 30 years later, they're, they, they they come across their crash derelict in the first movie. Like, <laughs> and that, that, that crash derelict like had been there for thousands of years, okay? How? How? Is this even possible? Because, I'm just going to go ahead and rant about it here. Ridley Scott claims that David is the creator, all right? That makes no fucking sense. It makes absolutely no fucking sense. Okay? Absolutely no... <laughs> so, he's saying that they never existed before this. The engineers didn't create them. Like, they're, David, they're a sole David creation. So, how the hell are they on the derelict ship for the first Alien movie? That makes no fucking sense! Okay? Like, there's... I feel like if they were to explain that in a third Prometheus prequel trilogy film, it would just feel shoehorned in. Like, it, this feels to me like they rushed it and they needed a way to get a Xenomorph from the film. Like, oh, David craze him. You know? And for Ridley Scott to open his stupid fucking mouth and say <laughs> that David is the creator, I hate that. I'll, I'll touch on this again later, but I, I fucking hate that. Next up, uh, the music. Yeah, this is a pro and this is a con too. I hate that they bring in the original Alien score so nonchalantly, you know? It makes zero sense for it to be there. Because every single other Alien film has its own unique score, right? This isn't directly tied to the original Alien. This is basically just saying, Hey, look, we got Alien in the title again. This is a Ridley Scott movie. Oh, look, don't you remember how good the first movie was? The only time it works for me is the end credits. I feel like that is a beautiful use of the original Alien theme, but whatever. <laughs> um, number four for the cons is David feels completely different. I love David in Prometheus. I feel like he's a great character in there, but for here, it's like a completely different character. It, like None of his motivations are the same. None of his mannerisms are the same. Like it's like it's like the character has gone completely fucking insane, which they kind of play on a little bit, but not deep enough to where it's it justifies this drastic change for the character. Watch Prometheus and Covenant back to back. I swear, you'll swear to God, it's completely different androids, but it's not. Okay, and what is it? Last Crossing. I think that's what the what the what the, the the deleted thing I was talking about earlier. I think that's what it's called. I'm not sure. This one that has um, Shaw in it. That is the David from Prometheus, okay? So it proves that it, it wasn't Michael Fassbender's acting. Like, he can still do it. That was just the direction that he was given. 
And I hate that. Seriously, watch Prometheus and uh, Covenant back to back. They feel like totally different Davids. Um, I'm going to do a quick cut real quick before my camera cuts me off because I only worked for 60 minutes and then I'm going to... Okay, now moving on to the Xenomorph. To me, it it's just not the Xenomorph. It's, it's too slender. It's too fucking fast. Alright? And it... it I just don't like how skinny it is. Like, I can deal with the Neomorph being as skinny as it is because it's a new creation, right? But for me, like, when you look at the Xenomorph in this movie, it just looks anorexic. It doesn't look like the Xenomorph at all. It's too fleshy, too. There's, like, no biomechanical detail in it whatsoever. It's just fleshy. And for Ridley Scott to come out and say, This is the Xenomorph. Sorry. Uh-uh. <laughs> this is not the Xenomorph. The only good Xenomorph scene is the terraforming bay. Everything else, like, it just feels stupid. It doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel like the Xenomorph to me. It doesn't even look like the Xenomorph to, uh, to me. Moving on to the chest burster scene. I like the idea of this scene. I love the music in this scene. I hate how quick... The fucking chest pressure comes out, and that's another thing. The life cycle of the xenomorph is just like that. It's like, oh, a face like, oh, 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 oh chest pressure. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much it, and then it's fully grown. Like that. <laughs> this is, this is not, that's another reason why this is not the xenomorph to me. It's just, it's just not. It doesn't add up. Connects, why is it? It disregards all canon. It does. <laughs> but the main thing that I hate about this chest burster scene. I, I'm not even that upset about it coming out fully grown like it is, you know, where it has like all those appendages. I wish it was more of like the fucking the amorphous dick looking thing where it just had like arms, you know, like it was an aliens or the original alien. But no, it, it comes out a little, little baby thing and I'm all, I can live with that. What gets me is Orum's acting. It's so bad. I can't help but laugh. It feels so uneventful. It does. It looks like it's a minor inconvenience for him to have a chest burster crawl its way out of his chest. John Hurt sold that shit way better than Billy Crudup, okay? Like, John Hurt's like, <laughs> like, he looks like he's in real, legit pain. Fucking Billy Crudup, he's just like, Oh, 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 wow, oh shit, something just popped out of my chest, okay. Oh, oh no, <laughs> And his hand does this little twitchy thing. And that's it! It is the most uneventful chest burster scene in the entire franchise. Alien Resurrection has a more believable chest burster scene than Covenant does. Okay, it... <laughs> It's so bad. The acting is terrible. I just spit on my camera. It's so terrible. I just, mm, I, just uh, I, I can't believe that's the take they went with. All right, because I remember there being a wide shot in one of the trailers, right, where Billy Crump is going at it. He's shaking and convulsing, and it looks like he's in fucking pain. And then they went with this dumb fucking take where he's just fucking lip dick the whole time. Like, I don't understand it. But that's just what we got. And I hate it. I like the idea of that scene though, but it's just poorly acted. Uh, moving on to the rush third act. Oh, yeah. It, it, it feels like the whole third act should have been its own movie to me. Like, so much of it, it's just like, do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. You're starting with the, the chest burster scene. Like, everything happens way too fucking quickly. And it, it, this is going down, to, um, let's see, where, where is it? Okay, I'm going to skip down to another point that I have down here, which is the unnecessary second scene. Now, I'm just going to cross that out so I don't cover it up again. Like, this ties into the third act, right? Like, why the fuck do you need a second xenomorph? Like, that, that just feels like the movie's like, ha, 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 you know, stopping and going. It's, and I don't, I don't like that idea. I like the idea of the Xenomorph being burped on the ship, you know, like, 
I like that. You know, it's, it's really cool. I like the only good Xenomorph stuff happens on the ship. You know, so... I don't know. I feel like for this to be the Xenomorph, and for this to be the ultimate killing machine, both of them get taken out really quickly, you know? Like, they could have easily found a way for the the first one to just somehow make it back to the ship, you know? Eh, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to start rewriting the movie in this because fan edits are, and fan rewrites are just always garbage and nobody ever takes them seriously. But, and there's some good ones, but nah, I'm not going to put my foot in that ring. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the, the, the second Xenomorph is just so unnecessary. And like I said, the whole third act in general is just completely rushed. It, like I said, it feels like it should have been its own movie. And the Xenomorph doesn't get enough time to really shine. It kills two people. Two people. That's it. That's another reason I say the Xenomorph should have been the main antagonist creature in this. Because neither one of them got enough time to shine. You know, and the Xenomorph is something brand new. It's really cool. It's not stepping on sacred ground like the Xenomorph does in this. So it really should have just been the Neomorph the whole way through, I think. Anyways, moving on to the second act is boring. Everything in between the flare until the chestburster scene, I almost fall asleep every single fucking time I watch. Nothing happens. Absolutely nothing happens. They just sit in a room and then Michael Fassbender makes out with Michael Fassbender and they play the flute, and that's about it. That's the second act of this movie. 30 minutes where nothing happens. Yeah, it, it's... It, I don't know what the fuck they were thinking. Like, they have a whole other Neomorph that we don't know what happens to it in this movie. It just completely disappears. I mean, we know what's supposed to happen to it. If you, you fucking read the, the, the fucking leak script, or if you... You know, pay attention to any behind the scenes stuff. It was supposed to be a Xenomorph versus Xenomorph showdown while they were waiting for Tennessee to bring down the dropship, right? That would have been awesome to see, right? I wanted to see that. That would be cool. But no, now the Neomorph's just left in the wind. Uh, so unnecessary. Uh, there's so much unnecessary stuff in this movie. And I feel like they should just be more contained and more concise. And yeah, more to the point, you know, instead of trying to cram all this. Like, it's literally like they're trying to cram Prometheus 2 and an Alien prequel together. Uh, uh, um, okay, go skip that one, because I already covered the second Xeno. Okay, David is the creator. I've already touched on this a little bit. But, when I first watched this movie, I didn't take it as David is the creator. I took it as David is a creator, that he was following engineer blueprints, because they kind of set that up in the movie. And there's a line in there that really was like the smoking gun for me, where they're talking about the Osmandius play, and he misquotes the writer, right? He says it's Byron, but it's Shelley, right? And to me, that was him... You know, it's like It's like a... Artistic way of saying, like, he thinks he created this, but he didn't. You know? <sighs> but no. Ridley Scott's just like, Oh no, me, he... You know, like, oh no, he created it anyway. I will, because he has to have a cigar in his mouth every fucking time he talks. Like, oh, well, yeah, he created it anyway. It's just, did this anyway. Yeah, he did create it. <sighs> fucking hate it. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth, Ridley Scott. Please, for the love of God, shut your mouth. Oh my God. Oh, I never thought I would say something like that towards the man who created the first Alien movie, but like, ugh. I'm just, get, I'm just gonna rant about it now. He had this whole spiel the whole time they were making this movie saying, oh, Alien is my baby. I need he's always in my baby. It's like what are you fat bastard? Maybe baby 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 ribs, you know. He's like alien is my baby, it's my legacy. I need to bring it back, you know, and I, I want to bring it forth. Like, no, it's not your Star Wars. 
you were a hired gun to direct the first movie. Okay, like it wouldn't be the same without you. But Alien is Dan O'Bannon and Ronald Schussett's baby, okay? You had no narrative input on this movie whatsoever. You, like, you had Ash in it. That's pretty much it. Adding an android into this is your biggest fault about this whole franchise, right? Like, I love adding Ash in there, but even Dan O'Bannon's like, no, why does he need to be an android? That's stupid. It's pointless. And it's going on into this movie. Like, why do we need two androids... Making out, you know, like, I don't, like, why does there need this whole guy complex with an android? The whole thing focuses on an android, it's an android, an android. You have, you have a franchise that you already directed a movie of, and I have a sequel last year, too, that focuses on androids. It's called Blade Runner, alright? And Blade Runner 2049 was a hell of a lot better than Alien Covenant, okay? Make more Blade Runners. Get the android shit out of you know, Alien Universe, okay? Make sure we gotta have synthetics in here. That's like, it's pretty ingrained in Alien DNA, but don't make it about the synthetics. Mm. 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 Hey, Ridley Scott. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this franchise is not your baby. If anything, it belongs to fucking... I feel like Cameron has more of a claim to fame on anything because his film affected such more so sequentially in the franchise. Like, you you just have a horror slash thrill movie in the beginning that says the toe for everything. Granted, people say that's the best one. I still think Aliens is the best one, the most influential. Alien is, like, really close behind for it for me, but... I don't know. I don't think it's his baby. Like, he walked away from the franchise. He hated sci-fi for years refused to ever direct it again. It was just a hired gun. It was another job for him. It was a gig for him to get into the game. And now he's trying to talk about this big game like, oh, yeah, it's my baby. Like, no. No. As you tell, that's been pent up for years. <laughs> Not for years. <laughs> Almost a year. Almost. It'll be, uh, yeah, pretty much um, 11 months to the day that I'm recording this, so that's good. Um, okay, the CGI creatures. If you haven't watched Special Features, they had a full-bodied Neomorph suit on set. Now, the Xenomorph suit was from the waist up, mainly just, like, the chest piece and the head. There was, like, no leg ap apparatus, and the arms were, like, super thin, and they were, like, an exoskeleton over the person's arms. The Xenomorph suit was really an afterthought, like the Xenomorph itself in the movie. Um, but the Neomorph suits were fucking cool! And there's an actual deleted scene where you get to see the guy in the full Neomorph suit walking around, and it's great. It's really cool. And a lot of the scenes where the adult, the Neomorphs in the movie, it's the, the guy in the suit was there. They filmed it. They CGI'd over it. Same thing with the Xenomorph. Like, even though it was just from the chest up, like, anytime it's close-ups, they CGI'd over it. The suits looked awesome! Why in the hell would you CGI over that and just... It looks unnatural when you do it like that. Like, go watch that deleted scene with the Neomorph where you see him moving. That's way more creepy than anything that we see from the Neomorphs in the final film. It's just such a baffling decision to me to CGI over the Neomorphs like that. You know, it's... Or even the, you know, the Xenomorph too. Like, why did you CGI over the creatures? You had these awesome suits. Why did you do that? It's just like with the Thing prequel. Why did you do that? It's stupid. The practical effects are awesome. And I never understand that. I never understand. It, it pisses me off. Uh, <laughs> uh, next up, the ending. And it's not so much um, where the, the reveal that oh Walter is actually David, right? He, I don't like where Daniels goes over there like, no! I like the reveal where she realizes, like, oh shit, this is David. Like, I like that. You know, like, they change, like, bitch, what you talking about camping, you know? <laughs> but, um, it's just when he puts the, like, he regurgitates the facehuggers out and then puts them in the, um, little embryo holder and then he walks down the hallway. Like, that, that's how the movie ends. Like, that's so uneventful. It, it, it just feels uneventful. It really does. Like, for this whole movie, for at least Scott style being so theatrical, you know, so cinematic, for it to end on a guy in plain clothes walking down a hallway, 
don't know. I think it should end up with the epilogue that's on the Blu-ray, right? I like that epilogue. It, you know, it's, it's like a separate special feature. And it that's really well. I feel like if you made it like a fan cut and add all the deleted scenes and add that epilogue and all that good stuff, it'd be really good. Really good. Um, which you know, that ties into my next point, missing footage, which I'm going to have to cut again because my camera's about to run out. So yeah, missing footage. Um, so we got the, yeah, the last crossing. We, uh, is this the last crossing? Shit, I don't know. This, the, the, the crossing, or whatever the fuck it's called, and the last supper. I might be combining those two names. Um, and even the, the She Won't Go Quietly TV spot, you know, where it was just Daniels and Mother's talking. It, mother, Daniels and Mother talking. And like she was using Mother as like a motion tracker to find a xenomorph. That was awesome! And from what we've read, like, that was just shot for marketing material? So you mean they had better CGI in that than they did in the final film? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like that's the deleted subplot that we're never going to find out. Because they did do reshoots on this, and I think what we have in the final film is part of the reshoots, you know? Because I say that, that, that she won't go quietly... TV spot was filmed by Ridley Scott's son, and if that's the case, get him to direct the next. I, I dropped my paper. I'm done. I'm done. Get him to direct the next movie, right? Because like, that was fucking awesome. Like that little TV spot was better than Covenant as a whole. Just like the whole reveal, like, oh mother, where's this goddamn thing? Oh, ten meters above you. Like, oh, you know, like, oh, and then reaches down. Like that's so cool. I like that. I like this. It, I was so excited to see how that played out in the film, and then, sadly, it wasn't there. And like I said, The Crossing wasn't there, and Last Supper wasn't there. We, we knew The Last Supper wasn't going to be, but we thought The Crossing was going to be in there. It, it was, it's in there was a script. It's in there. All the deleted scenes, they add so much more to the characters. They, people complain, like, oh, we don't get enough screen time with the characters, or the characters aren't fleshed out enough. And that's why I like Orem, because of the deleted scenes. Like, his character makes... Way more sense to me, you know. It's like he's a well, better, more well-rounded character <laughs> in the film when you watch the little scenes like that, you know. So I feel like there needs to be a special edition of Prometheus too, because there's a lot of deleted of Prometheus that'll help it make a lot more sense too. Um, and me and my buddy Robbie always talk about we have a head cannon, you know, for Prometheus, where it's like if we think of all the deleted scenes when we watch it, you know, because like it's like our extended cut inside of our head. But Prometheus needs a special edition sorely. Covenant needs a special edition sorely. And I don't understand why really Scott's so adverse to doing them. He did one for the Martians, so it's not like he has like a certain distaste for doing special editions, you know, like he did one for the Martian, right? <laughs> so he needs to go back and do an extended cut of Prometheus and Covenant. Because I feel like that would help the movies drastically. Right. Because a lot of the stuff kind of goes against David being the creator. And I think that's why he cut a lot of that stuff, you know? And I, I, I don't know. I, I just, I want, I want a fucking extended cut of these. I feel like it would help out a ton. It's like Alien 3. Like the assembly cut of Alien 3 is a million times better than a theatrical cut. And I feel like that would happen here with Covenant. I, I still really like Prometheus, but I think it does need an extended cut. I think the first cut of Prometheus was like two and a half hours, and he got it down to two. And the first cut of Covenant was like 2.45, and he got that down to two. Like, he's, he wants to get everything down to two hours, and I don't think that's long enough for the kind of stories that he likes to tell. He needs like at least like two and a half hours, you know? So, I don't know. That's just my thoughts on Alien Covenant. Um... Let me know what you think about the movie. It's been it's been almost a year. It's been it's been a long time coming, but I've I had to watch it enough, collate my thoughts, and I just didn't want to go out in the sea of negativity that was there because a lot of um, YouTubers they just completely turned on it, and you know, I wanted to try and find some good. Like I, I fucking love the Neon Wars, right? And I, like I, I do feel an extended cut of this will save it, but I, I don't know. I just feel like the franchise in general is just waning because of this movie. Not many people are talking about it anymore. We're not getting 
Toonie announcements, like NECA's not even doing an Alien Day figure this year, which that worries me. <laughs> I'm worried that the, the their alien cells are starting to go down. You know, I don't want that line to die. Um, I don't know. It's just like my hype for everything alien just kind of died for a while after this movie. Just maybe because of Ridley Scott. Like, him being so insistent. Like, I came out of the movie... Remember, I saw this movie in four times in theaters. Four fucking times. And... To me... Like I said, I took it away that David was not the creator, that he was just a creator, that this was not the xenomorph, that this was just a xenomorph, you know. And for him to come out and say, like, no, this is Big Chap, you know, David is the creator, like, no. It doesn't make any sense. I'm sorry. It makes zero sense with the franchise. And I just got so many people telling me left and right, like, well, Ridley Scott, his word of the king, whoa, 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 he says this, he says that, blah, blah, and it ruined the movie for me. It really did. And that's why I've kind of, like, tuned out The Last Jedi stuff, because some people are just like, blah, 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 and I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't care. I, just, I like the movie, shut up. <laughs> I don't want to hear about any more negativity stuff. You know, I don't want and that to be ruined, like, Coven has been ruined for me, you know? But, I don't know. I feel like with time, people will appreciate this movie a little bit more, especially if we do get a special edition. But for me, it, sh it just feels like a mismatch. You know? It feels like two different movies are mashed together, and the first half is really great. Really great, up until that flare. When that flare pops, that's, that's when the movie turns. And I, I think that really Scott should stick to horror if he does another one of these, because... All the best scenes in this movie are horror based. You know, you have the med bay scene. Really tense, really scary. The face hugger scene, even though it was very short, like that's scary as hell, right? That, that makes you scare crawl. I, I enjoy the hell out of that. And the terraforming bay scene, like that's imposing, that's freaky. I like that. It's just like when he tells tries to this grand story about fucking god complexes with androids and all this weird shit. Like, I don't I don't care. This is an alien movie, okay? I don't care about androids. And I don't care. I don't care, okay? <laughs> Ugh. I don't know. Anyways, that's gonna be it for this video. Hey, questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comments down below. Let me know what you guys thought about this movie. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.